Elizabeth Best sits across from me. I what do. What is the straight male equivalent of uh, finding a live, love, laugh sign in a, as a, a decoration? That seems to be the the women who put up the live, love, laugh uh, in their like home. Like that's an instant like that's kind of red it's, flag it's your goodbye. Basic. That's what we're saying. Yeah, oh, you're okay. basic if you if we see that. That's basic a, male. That seems to be our common. No bed frame. No bed frame. Yes, <laughs> this is such a big issue that comes up time and time again. Men that have the mattress on the floor. Yeah. No bed frame. No bed frame. Um, or only. One armchair, like not a couch. Ah, oh, yeah. right. You just, yeah. you, you're so insular. Walk in, yeah, basic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, but I think that's arrested development more than like a decorating choice, right? Yeah, that that is true. But I'll I'll, I'll accept it as an answer. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's a beautiful point. Yeah, something wrong with the mat with not with the mattress If on I the floor. walk into a into a guy's room and he has his mattress on the floor, I'm turning around and walking out. I'm sorry. If if my partner uh, starts putting up the live love laugh yeah. uh, deco- uh, de- decoration on the wall, I'm laughing in their face and yeah. inquiring when it's like <laughs> good joke. <laughs> when's it? <laughs> but no, but seriously, when's it? I'm in the middle of doing a cross stitch for someone that says live laugh loathe and I'm into that one. Fine. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. I'm all about it. Yes. But, yes. but no, I don't or, or like believe up on the wall anywhere yeah. like believe yeah. believe in what, what? <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to believe in anymore the world's a garbage dump i don't know I, there might be there might be a straight male equivalent is it a neon sign like a drinking Can sign we, beer, beer merch beer, beer merch yeah the the footy the jersey I don't know. Can we post this in the group, Tom? Absolutely can you make a can, note yes. to post this in the group today and find out what Bother we think? the group with <laughs> inane bullshit. There okay, we go. Okay, great, Bother great. And we'll ask we'll ask everybody, like, not just what's a male thing. I want to oh, yeah, ask, yeah, yeah, yeah. what do you Please. see when you walk into someone's house and go, yeah, basic? You're kidding, right? Yeah. That's, what you, yeah. that's what you've dialed your Red personality Red flag, I'm to. leaving. Yeah. <laughs> hello, uh, hello one and uh, hello all to go to boyfriend's past. I'm a very sleep-deprived Tom Harris. You may have picked that up. Elizabeth Best, I mentioned before. Ding, ding, ding. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm slightly less sleep deprived, but more stressed. Ah, I'm running on cortisol at the moment. I'm just, Great. <laughs> I'm just not running at all. <laughs> <laughs> you join us on a main episode of, Ghost of Boyfriend's Past where we bring in a guest to have a natter, walk us through a traumatic, weird, all and sundry uh, dating experience. Um, we, un- we listen, we learn, we laugh, we live, we love. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Just, You're fired. Just, oh, God, it's two <laughs> weeks in a row I've been warned live on no, the air. No, you're this close. One more throw. Three strikes and you're out, Harris. Oh, very good. So we have a guest for this main episode. And because we listen, I mean, this is unusual. We're having two main episodes in a mm. row. And there's a reason for that. It's because we have an actor from the show Bombshells, which is what Jess Ham from Jess Ham Productions came in and talked about last week was this show that's going on in Brisbane. So we wanted to make sure that we got both of the stories in before the show goes up. So we've got today with us, we've got Libby Harrison, actor, business Ooh. owner of a role-playing company called AdLib, an entrepreneur extraordinaire. Libby Harrison, welcome. Thank you very Come much. Come on down. <laughs> now, Libby, you are in this wonderful show, Bombshells, that's going up in April, which is now by the time this airs. You're playing two characters. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the characters that you're playing before we get into your story. Okay, so there's there's six characters in total, uh, three women, so we each get two. And we wanted to do contrasting mm. characters. So my first lady is Tiggy Entwistle, and she's a very shy lady who is giving a talk on cactus <laughs> and <laughs> succulents. <laughs> And uh, her husband's just left her. And somewhere through the story of delivering this speech on on her succulents, she kind of loses the plot <laughs> and decides to tell everyone about the the ex-husband. Amazing. Who's walked down on her. Amazing. Uh, I feel like we could have had her in character yes, on this that podcast. Would have been a, that would have been a great <laughs> idea. Oh, well. Yes. Well, there are, you know, there's there's – a line in it that when she completely loses the plot and thinks she's talking to Harry where she says, 
as if a fat, balding, 49-year-old lactose intolerant fair infringement officer is going to set anyone on fire. (laughs) And I just really like it. So good. You'll, you'll fit yeah. in here, Libby. <laughs> right. but, but to make it even better, we need a photo of Harry, the ex-husband, um, as part of the show. And I asked my, my husband if he would do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then told him that's the description oh. of him. <laughs> and he's all for it. So Good. Yeah, Bless. Good he's man. All, he's all for it. So my second character is uh, Teresa McTerry and she's a bride getting ready for her wedding day and um, she's extremely excited and very Australian. Uh, So she's getting ready for her wedding day and then it kind of hits her what's happening and, um, you know, as she's walking down the aisle, she's like, I'm not quite sure that I want to do this anymore. Awkward. So, yeah, yeah. So she's... um, Kind of reasoning it out with herself, I suppose, and, and seeing where she's going to end up. But uh, yeah, she she has a has an interesting time at at the wedding. Yeah, nice. <laughs> a lot of lines to learn and different moods and energies you've got to match and not get caught between. You can't take one energy into a different character because you've forgotten that. You, no, hang on, that's not their energy. Completely different oh, energies. Whole, there's yeah. mental gymnastics up the wazoo over here. Mm. That totally right. Thank goodness there's an intermission between us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's right. <laughs> Dash to the script and, and read over it. Yes. Oh, fantastic. So before we get into your stories, we have we have rules. I don't like rules. Rules are boring. But the lawyers tell us in the corner. They keep nodding to me and say we have to do the rules. In a cool, edgy way, you could say that rules are meant to be broken. But not our rules. No. Right? The lawyers will have our butts. (laughs) And this isn't for you, uh, Libby. Every guest gets this. And we only repeat these rules for new uh, new readers to this show that come along and wonder what the hell is going on here. So Libby's here to tell uh, a story or stories about uh, dating gone by. So the first one we ask for is an alias. Generally, yes. most guests come on and they use an al- alias for someone because they, ne- they need to. We don't want people, you out there, piecing together who Libby's talking about and then doxing. Information comes out, workplaces, and then all that. And that it's leads not... into our don't be a dick rule where yeah, if you figure the... out who yeah. Libby's talking about, don't be a dick because you're going to spoil it for everybody because this whole podcast is about what we learned yes. from these experiences. It's not about giving people hell because they've been absolute dickwads. No. And that comes to our third rule, mm. which is no threats on air. On air. So I retract the on dickwad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, let's <laughs> try. Uh, mm, okay. I didn't threaten them. No. I just called them a name. No, that's a, an insult is fine. I think <laughs> it's not a threat. You dickwads. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's rules. That's our guest. That's our format. So Libby, tell us like where are we starting mm. with your story slash maybe stories today? Well, I thought after listening to your beginning that um, red flags is. Possibly the the topic. Amazing, really. um, you know, starting from dating experiences. Now, a red flag for me is going into a man's house, and if he's over twenty five, he should not have a upside down milk crate with a <laughs> with a tea yes. towel on it as a coffee table. Yes, you know? no tea, milk crates tea. allowed unless they are actually. Creating milk. Creating milk. And realistically, <laughs> these days, unless you're working at Woolies, why do you have a milk crate? Yeah, where, yeah. You know, where are you getting Where do they come from? from? Mm. So that, that would be a red flag. Um, I dated a guy who uh, loved Star Wars, and that's great because I love Star Wars. I mean, Star Libby's Wars. literally sitting She's here in a Star Wars t shirt. Star Wars, Wars right t shirt. Um, but he was obsessed with it yes yeah, uh, yeah. This, this. there's a certain yeah. line that you get to as a fan where if you cross that there's no coming back it's just no. calm down it's a movie about space wizards it's real let's how not, dare let's you let's not get too up you know uppity about about who, so, uh, how, law yes. and all that how obsessive okay. we talk well we we did the midnight screening when episode okay, that's fairly normal yeah. Yeah. yeah so we did that but he borrowed my sewing machine so okay. that he could make yeah, yeah, a yeah, 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 yeah. jedi Outfit. Okay. Uh, my my spare room was covered in hessian 
because the majority of the outfit was made out of hessian. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there were the bits of hessian fluff everywhere. Oh, that, it just for makes me months. itchy thinking yes. about it. Because yes. I have allergies and I'm pretty sure hessian sets me off. So I'm just like, Ugh. yes. No. So that, that was pretty hideous. Um, eventually, because, okay, so I'm talking about red flags. I went out with him for a year. Uh-huh. Yeah, because I, I was a little bit blind no to the. <laughs> yeah, I was a bit blind to the flags, but I kind of because he was also very unemployed. Um, I like very unemployed. Yeah. Very. Not just unemployed. <laughs> very, very, very unemployed. Very unemployed. He, it, yeah, it was excuse after excuse, and and I was working, so it was kind of nice. We never lived together, but I would sometimes go past his place on my way home from work, and he would like to cook dinner and stuff because his flatmate was employed so he would just take all the food because she was a chef he would take all the food that she um you know she brought home mm, right. and prepare it mm. uh so i got nice food that he hadn't paid for himself um and i'd have a decent meal and everything and then i'd stay or go home um but eventually i thought how am i going to get myself out of this so i moved to sydney <laughs> <laughs> There we go. <laughs> that might be the pinnacle, the best we've had on Ghost of Boys and Bosses. Ah, moving, no, moving out of state. Yeah, yeah. So I thought, oh, this is just going to sort of peter away. But uh, I was working at Fox Studios in Sydney. Oh. When we opened the Backlot Tour down there, which was meant to be a little bit like Movie World, but a bit edutainment mm. sort of thing. And it, it, was a, it was a massive failure. But in the beginning, they were filming some of the other Star Wars down there. So he came down because he's like, oh my God, you work at Fox and I could get into Star Wars and you know, when I want to meet Steven Spielberg and all of this sort of thing. So that didn't last, thank goodness. He came down for a little holiday and hit, not Steven Spielberg. Yeah, I was, I was doing the math in my head. I was <laughs> so, like, did he do yeah, no, Star Wars? George Lucas, yes. scrap that. Would you, will, that's a post. Let's fix that in post. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, let's draw attention to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, no, let's because <laughs> there was so, he was there anyway. I'm getting off topic. Um, so he disappeared and came back up here, and eventually just sort of pizzed away. About two years later, when I realised that Sydney's a bit of a hole, <laughs> I came back up and I was at karaoke on the Gold Coast as you do, and he was there. And um, he was dating somebody else and everything, so that was terrific. But I, I said, oh, so, yeah, how you going? And he said, uh, oh, I'm still on the rock and roll. And that was enough for me to go, geez, I made a good nope. decision there. <laughs> Especially when he called it the rock and roll and he was, you know, I don't know, mid-30s. Um, and then he said, oh, sometimes... I just really want to like fly off to Endor or something, you know, it'd be so much nicer. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> then all the red flags were oh, poking out. Then he on so, signs by this point. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah they were going crazy. Um, so, yeah, so that was the end of, we'll go with Luke for his name. Luke. <laughs> uh, Luke. Um, oh, one more p- thing though. He had said if ever we did have kids together, he wanted Luke and Leia or similar. it was going to be Anakin. Oh, oh, very good. Boy or girl, it was going to be Anakin. So no, you can't. Yeah. You can't. With names that recognize, you just yeah. can't. I'm sure there's now some 20 year old Hermione's in the world. and Yeah, and there's a couple of like Daenerys's yeah, that are going to be feeling pretty shit be, about the fact yeah. that they named their kids Daenerys after what happened in Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that was him done. Uh, I went out with a guy when I was in Sydney um, who was uh, when I met him um, I hated him that so. is a solid basis for <laughs> a relationship yes I, ha- I hate you hated him let's, get let's date yeah. Yeah. Let's try. so we were both working at Fox and he was working in security and he was one of these rules are rules and there is no grey in his oh, world. Oh, I've dated that. No. So, yeah, yeah. So I I had 40 staff under me and we had just gone through the process of how they go through the gates and how they pick up uh, their radios and, and uniforms and all of this. And then the rules changed to something ridiculous um, and this guy decided that he needed to enforce that. 
Uh, so I had staff coming up saying, hey, security won't let me do the process. And um, yeah, so I, I hated him when I first met him. Then I went to a uh, film premiere for Robin Williams' Bicentennial Man. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And this guy was there and he was very, very tall. Um, and then I liked him. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so no. yes. that, yes. that was attractive, I knew it. right? I knew it. Oh, <laughs> We've raised no. this on the past the, episodes. The, <laughs> yes. Why yeah, height? It, it, was a, it was attractive. Um, it was, but also because I was at this film premiere and there were a lot of people there, he could hold the camera up higher than I could. So I got some great photos of Robin Williams simply because this guy was was taller. That is a good reason to sleep with someone. I thought so. <laughs> I hate, I hate, I hate you. But you're six foot one. So. Yeah. so can you hold the camera for me? Hey. Um. So yeah. So we kind of hit it off after that. Uh, and far look, too much tequila. Film well. premieres. <laughs> Like I was gonna say, there's there's usually some booze flow, and everyone looks a little bit better than they uh-huh. than yeah, they normally right. do. It's all a bit fairy tale ish. Yes, yes. Yeah. So yes, and we ended up like um, because it was at Fox Sports at um, at Fox Studios, and in the bathrooms, the the floors are painted like like different sports things. So we were t- I can't remember what was in the girls netball things and all of that, but the boys had like basketball things painted on the floor and so he wanted to show all of us so all the <laughs> girls ended up on his sort of say so coming into the boys lose to check out where they were aiming and whether they were getting in the goalposts and you know and all of this because of all this painting that was was around there um so was this like an i'll show you mine if you show me your situation yeah, kind of deal <laughs> He did end up in the girls' <laughs> toilet, so yeah, yeah, mm, slow man. So yes, so he was um, separated from his wife uh, and currently couch surfing with lots of different friends. So when we got together, it made sense for him to move in. Yes. No, yes, like no. four weeks down the it track. Makes sense, Liz. No. What you're not seeing it, Liz. It made sense. Libby, make it make sense. No. <laughs> yeah. no. He doesn't have a so place to live, right? So many people have fallen into Libby this trap. Libby has a place yes. to live. Yes. Put the two together. I've it fallen makes into sense. this trap. I, I made know. them move out and get their it's own totally. place again eventually because, my God, uh, no. Yeah. No, it was uh, – when I spoke earlier about the, the guy with the overturned milk crate, this guy didn't even have a milk crate. You Dying you know, for a he milk was crate. so bad that there was no milk crate. So, so yeah, he moved in after like four weeks, and um, I had I lived in Sydney. I lived in a shoebox. So we kind of went, oh, we should move to somewhere a bit larger, a bit bigger. Yeah. Now yeah, wait, bedrooms. this is an extra step. So moving in because he just needs somewhere to stay to getting a place that suits us both together are very different things living yeah, and yeah. they're both not good that, no no it was way too quick liz they've the, been together a month okay <laughs> oh that I, makes I don't sense. think you're in a position to, to, yeah. to bring up any qualms so yeah. you move to a bigger place you well, take we, that step we started looking at bigger places yeah. and in sydney this was um late 90s into 2000 and in Sydney back then, rentals were all open home. So you did 15 minute stints. Uh, it's open for 15 minutes and then you all run to the next place and it's open for 15 minutes. It's still we, like that. Yeah, like yeah. I, I lived awful. there in what, 2013 to 2016. And we ended up giving our applications before we even entered the property because it was brutal. We were racing the same couples yes. to the same houses. Mm. Yes, that's what it was like. So we, because neither of us had a car. Well, I don't know whether he didn't, the ex-wife, I don't know. But mm. we didn't have a car because I sold mine when I, I got to Sydney. So we hired a car one weekend because we were doing it all on public transport and it just wasn't working. So we hired a car. We had about three or four weeks of doing that, looking at places and madly filling in all the applications and mm. sending things off. And it's about, an adrenaline sport in Sydney. Yeah, yeah, faxing. I mean, who faxes? <laughs> <laughs> so faxing. Yeah. In the 2000s, who faxes? <laughs> faxes. Um, so we, uh, we got somewhere approved and I had given notice at my place and I paid the deposit for the new place because, mm-hmm. you know, he was, uh, yeah, at least knows where someone this is had, going. Someone so had to, Liz. Someone <laughs> had to pay the deposit. So much sense. So, yeah. He has no deposit. Libby has deposit. It's that makes sense. Someone yes. Has, that's right. Yes. 
And um, about a week before we were due to move, I was going to work. And he would had a bit of a cold, so he wasn't going to work at that stage. And when I left the house, I just thought something's weird. You know, something. You get that feeling. Yeah. yeah. Something was Something's off. off. Hmm. Something was off. And the night before, he had sat up for hours watching telly and all, and and because he was sick, and you know, um, and you know, I'd gone off to bed, and so I left, and he was still asleep, but something was weird. So I tried at about lunchtime. I tried calling his mobile, and um, and. He didn't answer, so I left a message. And then I thought, oh, man. And it was weird. It was like it didn't ring long enough, you know, um, before it went to voicemail. So I rang the house, uh, the unit that we're in, and I left a message there as well because I had an answering machine back then. Mm -hmm. Um, So I left a message on there as well and just sort of said, you know, I hope you're okay and and, uh, feeling all right and looking forward to get home. I'll try and finish a bit early, all of that. Um, And then when I came home, everything was gone. All of his stuff was gone. Whoa. So I came home okay. to his key and a note on the table. Um, the red light of my message flashing like, yeah. on the answering machine and everything that, you know, that uh, was his in the house was gone. And the note said, um, I thought I'd better go back and try with the ex-wife. <laughs> Oh, he did not. Oh, yeah. Oh. What, uh, wow. He broke up with you via note he, and just fucking leaving. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then to make that it That is worse, not where I thought that was going. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to come home at lunch and there was going to be another girl in your house or oh, something. Oh, right. Be honest, re- everyone listening right now, who genuinely <laughs> put your hand up if you thought you saw if you saw that coming. No. My hand is not up. <laughs> no. My hand is down. No. I did not see that coming. Wow. So something in your brain went, he's not really sick. He's yeah. plotting and scheming. It didn't there's, make sense. But and then, I don't know yeah. whether this is just a women's intuition thing or whether but but there have been so many times when on the surface nothing has been wrong and my gut has gone yeah. Yeah. something's not right. Something's and not I've right. almost always been proven right. Yep. Yep. The the stupid thing was he well so many stupid things but <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. in that note he said I really need to try and work on things with with the ex-wife um you know I didn't tell you but she'd been contacting me a lot and and all of this um can you please be respectful and let us have some time. Oh my god! Okay, I'm gonna and don't get in contact. No, no. My instinct then was just to do the wank motion in the air. Yeah. No, absolutely yeah. not. No. So I. So then that makes me. you seem crazy. Yeah. yeah. Because Please you're don't not be. be crazy. I asked <laughs> you to be respectful when I fucking ghosted you after we were about yeah. to move in my house, and you. Ugh. So yeah, but Press I the stupidly. Button. Press I the mean, button. Uh, it's hard to yeah. dump. Yeah. Yeah, but I know there. Are, I know that you. It's already over, but like. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well then, but stupidly, well, I don't know, stupidly or not, but when in this note it said, you know, I'm dumping you and please be respectful and don't contact me for a little while, I didn't because he, he said Because you're not a respectful to. human. So, yeah, yeah, I guess fine. so. But then he would start messaging me, are you okay? I'm really worried about you. Is ever, you know, are you all right? He's the one what who put me in that situation. emojis out there because you could have just sent back a finger. Yes, yeah. But yeah, no, so, no emojis then. Mm. But it, he was he was one of those. Everything became around. Him. I'm really worried about you. I'm not sleeping properly because I'm, you know, I'm worried. He about wants you. his cake and eat yeah, it too. He right. wants to be able to one, fuck you off. But one, have one, you hundred. go? That's okay. I'm being yeah. like, no, yeah. yep. get out. Yes. So that the relationship ended there. But I guess every time, like I'd date somebody for a while, and then you know, and then you forget that that guy was a bit of an idiot. And if I was lonely, I'd sort of text him or something and say, mm. you know, how are you? And well, by this stage, we're living in separate places, so it wasn't like a how are you? Yeah, you know, it was just a I'm lonely and want somebody to talk to. But it always, and then we friended each other on Facebook and all of this and mm. and everything. But everything was all about him you know do you know i had i had this is a girl thing but i had an abnormal pap smear once which happens from time to time and you have to go back in and get a second one which Mm. was then all clear 
But we were talking on the phone. I said, I've got to go back and get this second pap smear. And he was texting me until I had it done. Oh, my God, I'm so worried about you. I'm so worried about you. I haven't been able to sleep. And, you know, and I don't make my pap smear about yeah. you. No. You know, like this. Let's not be doing that. No. Oh. And even if you are genuinely concerned and if he's genuinely worried, back off, buddy boy. I'm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't need the that extra worry and stress. How yeah. are you or what can I do? Yeah. Not, I'm so worried about you. I'm going to frantically text you every two seconds to totally raise your cortisol yeah. levels about this. Uh, and I'm not sleeping and all yeah, the stress on me. Baby. Yeah. Poor baby. Poor yeah. baby not sleeping because he's so worried about the woman that he literally fucking <laughs> ghosted by taking all his shit out of the house. <laughs> did he get, but was he back with the wife, at, the ex-wife, or was he trying to? He all? did. Apparently, he went back with her for a while. Um, then they split up anyway. He then moved on to another lady. Right. Um, Did she have a spare bedroom? Was yeah. that why he moved on to her? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um, they got married. He moved to New Zealand for a while. Oh. Uh, they split up. He moved back. He was then. How have you kept tabs on because this guy? So I know. Much. Because we were, we did become Facebook friends. But because I was like, oh, isn't it nice to be friends with an ex boyfriend? What an idiot. You know? <laughs> Sometimes it is, but not when that person has treated you with such no, disrespect. No. And I just kept getting so caught up because the other thing was then he told me we, we, we're both ex military, and that was a draw card in the first place where yes, we both had that lifestyle that we could bond and connect discuss. Yep. Mm. He had made up stories that he told me. And I thought that they were true because I had no reason to disbelieve them. When he split up with wife, um, the other wife, and moved back to Australia, he's, he's in, um, am I allowed to say he's in Tasmania? If not, believe it. Enough people there. <laughs> um, he's the one that's not related to everybody else in Tasmania. <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably something you shouldn't say. No. We no, love our Tasmanian <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Thank Sorry, you I didn't, endlessly for I didn't listening really to say our that. show. Um, he is related to them. <laughs> no, he. Um, we were talking on the phone, and he then said, "Every I've got to come clean. Everything I said about this stuff that ha- supposedly happened when I was in the army didn't happen." And um, stolen valor is I a was, big no-no yeah. in, 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 amongst military types. He isn't is it? on a website because of that, ah, <gasps> not because good. of me. Nothing to do with me. Somebody else figured out. So that stolen valor is people pretending to be military. Th- th- yeah. they'll stand outside of stores in a in a military get up and say, "And uh, yes. can you donate to me?" Th- yes. But so they had actually he never served. Never served, or he had he not done any served, of the but things exaggerated that he said? Is a, served but exaggerated. Yeah. So he was. Um, he was never regular army. He was army reserve. Right. Right. Um, he was in the air force for five minutes after being, you know, army reserve. But the the work that he said he did, he never did. Um, and the way he ended up on that website is he was wearing a medal that he was not entitled mm. to wear. Yep. Oof, and do big you can't no, do that. no. You can't do big that. Big no, but, no. Yeah, so he had all kinds of – but he said, I lied about that because all this other trauma happened. So feel sorry for me and feel bad for me about this. Mm. But how do we but know this trauma exactly, is a thing right. now? Exactly. Um, so eventually, because is that trauma a thing, then he worked out that if there was some kind of – military trauma you can get money for that mm-hmm. oh. so then he had a repressed memory that may or may not have come back i don't know you know but um that's where i eventually went i i can't deal you yeah. just don't no. need that kind of person in your life no. there's right. no amount of loneliness that can make no. up for all that yes and that was the problem it was only when i was lonely that I would get in contact with him. Well, mm. it would. It, it makes sense to me because of the fact that you had a good relationship up until the literal disappearance. He yeah. was one of those performing, performative mm. partners who was like, everything's fine until the second it's not. And it's really easy to forget that one second it's not when you have a history of things being yeah. nice before that. Yeah. And so I don't... Don't blame you at all for that. That's a, a perfectly natural response to that. But you just need to have a support network of friends around you to be like, remember, remember that time he dumped you by a note and you'd already paid a deposit yeah. on a new place? Yeah, give Star Wars guy a, r- a ring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give him a bell. <laughs> he's, he's his Endor phone number. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so then I I um I did have a lovely relationship for a while and got married and had a child and you know and all of that Great. and then that kind of um it just went its course mm -hmm. and that was the end of that um and then I dated a guy who was in the theatre and I thought this is amazing here we go because now I've never it's... dated an actor and that will be great because he knows where I'm coming from um so that didn't go so well yeah no. look I've got I'm an actor myself and I've got a saying fucking actors <laughs> uh, yes that's yeah. quite, quite apt <laughs> now I think this is the guy that I remember yeah so yeah. Libby and I have done a show together and I remember that this guy we, we talk about him backstage and he was referred to as the sanctimonious turd that's the I one. believe, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, knowing all of the actors I know in this here town, I, uh, there's many faces that could <laughs> that spring up. So, so, so dear readers, we have, we have no idea who they're talking about. It was, it might have been me. Did we date? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe briefly. Maybe, yeah, I can't, there's a lot I blacked out in my life. Hmm. So, so, what was it about? theatre guy that you were like yes and then no I think the main thing that was the yes was we did a show together and I thought you just you, there's there's an energy that happens in yeah. a rehearsal room sometimes when and you're just like hey hey you yeah how you doing? Yeah. yeah so he um he would and as much as he was a, a nasty person. He was a great actor. I hate that because yeah. then you have massive talent crushes. Yeah. Yep. Uh -huh. yep. So I really, I really like. And then you forget that presence. they're not the person that they are on stage. That they're yeah. actually a jerk. Not yeah. this. Yeah. That's it. So we, you know, we started chatting and and all. And he had told me that he and his wife were separated. Um, red flag. Um, it was separate, but still living in I the same house. I want a signed note from the separated partner yes. when people yeah. tell yes. me that. Notar I want to notarize yeah. yeah, the whole. Shebang. See, I I didn't think too much about it because when I split up with my husband. We lived together for three months while we sorted out what to do with the house. He was right. in the spare room. And then when the house sold, we took our money and we went our separate ways. So when old mate said, you know, um, we're separated until we sort out what to do with the house, I had no reason to not believe him. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we started hanging out. Uh, he came over. Now, I, by this stage, I was living with my little daughter and um, uh, in a house that I bought, um, he came over, he liked my house. It was bigger than I needed. It was a five bedroom house. Um, and when he was discussing stuff, he, he had two children, but one of them was older. And he said, oh, if ever we moved in together, you know, the younger one would come. And so it got very serious, very, very quickly. Mm. Um, if ever we moved in together, oh, that room could be son's room. Um, you know, all, all of this. That's very future seductive yeah, so when people planning. tell yep. you that kind of future yep. planning and yep. rushing into it very quickly. We went to open homes because then it would be, oh, it'd be nice to live on acreage. And he came over one day with a whole big planner. Is this all like this real stuff. estate love bombing? Yes. Is this is a is thing? Mm. No. Well, it's because it was then so nice to walk into these open homes. What made me angry is he got my kid involved. She came oh, to. No. So she's looking at open homes with us. In the meantime, she she was 11 or 12 mm. and he came over one day and he's wearing sneakers and she's like, oh, my God, he's wearing sneakers. So from then on he wore Vans, he wore Converse, he, you know, like he was going all out to impress the impress kids. Her, mm. yeah. He put shelves up in her room. He did everything to, to get her on side. We spent this entire day looking at open homes, um, bumped into somebody I know, so, you know, then it becomes real mm. because uh, everything – and um, we were supposed to be going to a Halloween party together and it was a dress-up thing. So we were going to do like the, the Gomez and Mrs. Gomez. Morticia. Morticia, Morticia yeah. that's her name. <laughs> Mrs. Gomez. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Gomez. Um, and then he pulled out of that at the last minute. Mm. And, um, and I had started going, oh, cause, because at the theatre – there was another theatre group nearby that he had been doing a lot of stuff. So when we did our show, some of those people came to watch and he was like, oh, not all of them realise that that wife and I have split up. 
So we'll just play everything down. Yes. Mm. Red flag. Yeah. Didn't see it. Uh-huh. Didn't uh-huh. see it because, again, I had no reason not to trust him. But when, so, so I just avoided the other people that night. But when he was talking to especially two of the girls in that group, when he talks to you and if he's being intense, he, he holds your elbow. So he'll reach his hand out and he'll mm. sort of cup your elbow as he's talking. And he did that with two of those girls. So afterwards, I said to him, hey, did you have a thing with either of those girls? I just thought you were a bit close. You know, you looked like you were just really friendly. And it was, no, 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 you're, you're jumping at shadows. You're seeing things that aren't there. You, you know, you're overthinking everything. And, mm. and then things started happening where I started going, oh, that's a bit weird. And every time I asked him about it, you're jumping at shadows. No, you're crazy. You're making things uh, up. You're crazy. You, yeah. you know. I'd, See, I'd, people who actually don't have anything to hide would just say no. They yeah. wouldn't be like, yeah, no, right. but you. Yeah. 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 The projection. Yeah. Yes. So then he said, hey, look, let's back it off for a while. I need to get everything sorted out at home. Um, but I really want to get all my ducks in a row and I want to turn up on your doorstep one day and surprise you. So, of course, I'm like, oh, okay, well, you know, he needs a bit of time and he needs to get his stuff sorted out back there. So I'm sitting at home. Meanwhile, a friend of mine is going, hey, you should come and meet my friend. He's really, really nice. And I'm like, no. Because and everybody else is like, yeah, it's just a word. That, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. No, because, you know, the sanctimonious turd is going to come back. <laughs> and um, then I start seeing posts where this other girl is tagging him in things. It had kind of, I had realised then, I don't think he was ever actually separated from the wife. Nope. You know, so that started dawning on me. He was not separated from the wife. What did she think about all of this? What You know, was he, how did he explain away where he was for hours mm. at a time? And, you know, Travels and all work, of that. Libby. Could well be. Could well be. <laughs> so then he starts hanging out with this other girl and I thought, I didn't trust him by this stage, so I went to her and said, hey, is something going on with, with you guys? And she... No, 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 no. We hardly know each other. Oh, you, you know, you're reading way too much into things. You're overthinking it, you know. And I thought, oh my god. So I actually started thinking. I was going crackers, right? Um, there was a night at the theatre that we were all going mm. to together. It was a fundraising night, and um, it was just after I had asked her that. No, we hardly know each other. Hardly know each other. And afterwards. He, he hardly spoke to me through the night, but I still stupidly had in the back of my head that he's getting his ducks in a row. Oh, yep, those ducks. You know, and any time he's, he's going to... They're tricky to get in a row, they those are, ducks. They, they run around. The they fine. do. So, um, but after that show, he bailed me up in the corner of the foyer outside the theatre and was doing the pointing in my face and how dare you uh, ask yuck, her and if you want to know yuck. anything, come and ask uh, me. And... Uh, and that was a hideous experience in itself because not one of those people who witnessed that mm, came over and yeah. said, are you okay? That's they sucks. all That's did that. Oh, they're having a private no, moment. We'll no. just turn our back and pretend that we're not seeing any of it. Right. And he's, again, he's a taller man. Um, so, and my back was literally in a corner. Um, the, so he... The girl I asked about that the both of them said they're now married. Uh huh. Nothing. Right? Yeah. You're so, crazy. Exactly. So finally, the the other wife. I don't know what happened there, but they did split up. He immediately moved in with the the new one. Um, but that's when I went. Oh, hold on. He was sizing up my house. I because he doesn't work. He he does bits and bobs mm. but you know his his wife had a full-time job this new lady has a decent amount of money because of family you've stuff. got a five-bedroom house i've yeah. got the five-bedroom house yep. um he he had sons but he did have a a because it's anonymous i can say this he did have a daughter uh that he had nothing to do with from a pre- apparently the lady didn't want him you know in the daughter's life I wonder and I, why. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I always I got this thing of because the new wife has daughters the two ladies at the theater that I thought he had something going on with had daughters 
And I think he was trying to capture that. Well, if I can't have my own daughter in my life, right. no, I will find a, a semi-successful, can stand on her own two feet female that you know has a house and has her act together and everything. And it's a bonus if she's got daughters because then that's I get my to happy have family. Yep. Yeah, that's my happy family. So he's now married, um, and unfortunately, we were supposed to be sort of on the same theatre committee for, mm. for that place. But that didn't go so well, um, especially with the lack of support for the, from those people yeah, who course. then just turned their backs. So I don't have a lot to do with them um, anymore. But the guy that I didn't meet, for, but my friend was trying to introduce me to because I was waiting for these ducks to be bloody sorted, is the guy I'm now married to. Yay! Oh. So there is, oh. you know... Uh, Silver and lining. We yeah, did it. Yeah. So so that turned out well in the end. Yes, Congra- good. Congratulations. Thank God after those dating stories. <laughs> My Lord. Wow. So, Libby, all of these red flags, what have you learnt now after going through all of that? What are a couple of the lessons that you learnt along the way? Pay attention to that gut feeling because mm, you, know? you were right in yeah. that, that first instinct you were uh, yeah when you get that thing that's just something's not quite right here you've really got to listen to it though uh, and unfortunately sometimes your friends are not correct because like with with the you know sanctimonious turd he um a lot of my friends were going oh he's so lovely oh he's so lovely. because he's got that charm they it's an actor thing. Yeah. They charm yeah. everyone. Sorry, Tom. I know, like, we're no, no, actors, I'm a but, ba- like... I'm a bad actor, so that doesn't apply, <laughs> oh, it doesn't so apply you're to fine. me. Yeah, no, good actors th- can sell anything. That's <laughs> what they're, you're, you're dating good actors. That's the your problem. The leading man type. <laughs> yeah. They're just like, let's charm everyone and smile, and they've got a little glint on their fucking teeth when yeah. they smile, and everyone's like, they're so wonderful. Because the thing is, too, he was not an attractive man. You know, um, he he was attractive because his talent was big and because he was he had the gift of the gab. But you look at him and you wouldn't think he was a player because he just he just did not. If you it's, saw him in the street, the you confidence. wouldn't give him a second look. It's the confidence. It's the confidence. Yeah, yeah. and there is something and not just actors. There is something to seeing someone do something well. Yes, do something I know. well. There is I something have, to it where you're just like fuck. Look I have made you're doing. many fuck. mistakes in my life. By watching someone do the thing that they do well and going, hey, hey. how you doing? Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> like big mistake. So maybe, Huge. yeah, maybe that's a little, a little speed bump to keep an eye out for on the road. Everybody, you know, don't get pulled in by that, by that trap fully. Yeah, yeah. Mm, interesting. I wonder what would have happened if you had just broken up with Star Wars guy. Like like an adult, you know, <laughs> instead, instead of, of flying to Sydney, you know, he could have could have gone a whole whole Wait, different way. When you moved, did you take all your stuff and just leave him? <laughs> oh no. God, yes. no, thank goodness okay, I didn't. Okay, so you prepped no. him. He yeah. knew. Okay, good. I was good. I was quite a grown up about okay, it. Okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> as much of a grown up as you can be when you move states. To when you move literally states. get rid of someone. <laughs> My lesson is not so much about the red flags, but it's if you see somebody having an argument where somebody is being physically intimidating to the other person Mm. for the love of God as long as it's safe or even if it's not safe call someone and if it is safe please step in I've gone up to someone before who looked like they were being hassled by a guy and I pretended that I knew her I was like hey Tiffany it's so great to see you and she's like oh no this is my boyfriend but thanks girl like it's it's one of those things where if you feel like and this is another trust your gut moment if you feel like something's wrong like most of these domestic abuse and and you know emotional abuse situations happen because everyone goes that's their business yeah that's right Um, and there are more statistically people are more likely to respond to someone yelling fire than help because they think they shouldn't get involved in something when someone yells help so if you see someone having an animated physically intimidating argument please Please try and do something. That's right. I'm gonna. I'm piggybacking your lesson learned because it was mine. Um, private moments. You know, you. That's such a nice excuse to not get involved with someone having a screaming match on this. Oh, they're having a private moment. But a private mm-hmm. moment is in at indoors, and it's a conversation. Mm-hmm. It's a moment. It's not a fucking t- like a, a, a extravagance yeah. of, yeah. of tears and a, yeah. so. Um, I'll say to. I'll direct this to men. If you do, s- where it's easier for us to 
to stand in and say something. Uh, it's it, patriarchally it, speaking. Yes, society I, accepts a man stepping in more than they. No, expect. no, but we're not, we're not going to get we're not going to get yeah. hit or abused. We're or you, less like. I mean, yeah. it could happen, but I think I think we could. It's easy to say love you. With great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, um, but I think it it is an easier thing than we 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 want to believe to go love you right here. Just check in two seconds and then and then go. Yeah. You know. Yep. Um, so good lessons learned. And I've got yeah. one other lesson. Please pile yes, them on. Because I've had the experience with a few of my friends where they have had that gut feeling, but it's been based on baggage. So it's not yes. necessarily a true gut feeling it's because they're scared of something that's happened before they get the gut feeling Mm. so what i want to say to that is that you will get gut feelings about things and you need to weigh up the evidence it's something that my shrink always says to me is they go write down on a piece of paper what evidence do you have to back up this feeling and if you start looking into your mind and going okay well i was feeling uncomfortable because he was touching that woman on the arm and because I don't really know much about the wife and because so then you can start to realize if your response to that is proportionate or not proportionate because sometimes it can be in your mind not always and I'm not saying discount your gut feelings but you actually tend to notice so much when you can sit down and dig deep and look at the evidence because then you're like a detective you might have sat there and, and missed a clue earlier that because you're now addressing it and deliberately trying to think of it you'll notice you know a a clue that you didn't notice before Mm. so yeah check Mm. in with yourself and write down the evidence that Mm. you have to feel the way that you feel if your hackles are rising at a uh, rising at a at a situation is it a genuine concern or is it the shadows of the echoes of something in your past and look nine times out of ten it's genuine because women are psychic magical unicorn gypsies and we know everything and you can't lie to us (laughs) absolutely terrifying (laughs) (laughs) but yeah Libby thank you so much for joining us Um, before we go did you want to have a little bit of a plug for your company ad lib Tell us sure, what you do and sure. we'll pop some notes in the show notes. So um, Adlib is a boutique casting agency uh, based in Queensland, but we we provide role players all over Australia. And um, I have 75 role players um, slash simulated patients on the books, all trained through me. And uh, and yeah, we go out for all different locations. So um Universities, training institutes, um, leadership management courses, uh, those sorts of things. A lot of health group things, uh, and it's it's nice and easy. One stop shop for picking up your role players. Wonderful. We'll put some links to that in the show notes. If you'd like to come on and plug something that you do, all you got to do is exchange us a dating story for it. It's pretty yeah, easy. That's right. That's the deal. That's the deal. You, you know, go to plug that's- it. That's notcanon.com forward slash ghosts of boyfriends past. We've got a handy dandy little form that you can fill out, or you can just email us ghosts of boyfriends past at gmail.com. And don't just email us if you have a story. We would love that. But if you have a response to a question that ever gets asked on this, or an input, or a better advice than what Elizabeth and, and myself can put out. If you shout it at your radio yes. while you, radio. radio, I listen to my podcast in the car. So if you shout it at your phone or yes. the podcast when we were saying something, you're like, no, but. But I, blah, blah, blah. We want that story. We want that info. We want your help. You can join Ghost of Boyfriends Past group therapy, which is our little group where you can post memes, you can post questions, you can help answer other people's relationship questions. And it's quite a self-sustaining little group. So if you're not quite ready to come on air yet, but you've got a question to, to ask That's or you right. want to give some help, join there. Toe. Otherwise, uh, rate and review the show. Uh, we, we know uh, we ask that every week, but it does genuinely help. And it does genuinely light up our hearts when we know that there's more lead- readers coming aboard, that we're helping more people. Um, it's a very nice feeling. So thank you for that and keep keep doing it. And the thought that I would want to leave you on, other than go buy tickets to see Bombshells, yes. is just don't break up with someone by post-it or note. <laughs> just don't fucking do it. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah.
When you walk through an art museum, what happens? You see some interesting things. You see some not so interesting things. <laughs> and if you're like me at all, you, you're probably a little bit sleepy. Well, grab a cafecito and listen up. It's Art Slice, a palatable serving of art history. I'm Russell Shoemaker. I'm Stephanie Duenas. We are not your daddy's art history <laughs> podcast. We are both artists. So we look at art history through that perspective. We cover the artists, you know, and those that have been ignored for so many different reasons. We look at the context of the time. We compare it to today. We don't dumb anything down, but, and this is a big but, hey, we like to have a good time, okay? Nos gusta to goof <laughs> around, all right? We have hungry pantry no, mons that no, might startle you. It's a long story. We, we feed them our materials. Art is just a visual language, so in order for us to interpret what we think it's saying, we hijack the work. Right. How do you like that for an art heist? Exactly. And ultimately, we decide if it belongs in our Art Slice Museum, okay. on top of the Art Slice okay. top. So, so if this all sounds right. good to you, join us on Art Slice a palatable serving of art history.